All right, everybody. We got a good one tonight. Go ahead. If you're watching this on replay, skip ahead a few minutes. We're just going to wait for the room to populate and people to start popping in here. And uh, we got some good things to talk about that nobody else is talking about yet. And I can't wait to discuss it with you guys. I say we already got one person coming in. Go ahead and introduce yourself in the chat window if you don't mind so that we know who's watching. It might be tea bags. <laughs> <laughs> Michelle's been stuck on Mr. Tea bags. We'll talk about it later. Oh, so, okay, we're going to yeah. talk about it later. Mm -hmm. All right. <clears throat> Go ahead and introduce yourself in the chat if you don't mind. We got just a few minutes while we wait for people to pop in before we start getting into the meat of things. Yeah, because we want to take lots of questions and yeah. answer lots of questions. So hopefully everybody's had a good week. We've had a full week of rain here. We went through mm -hmm. three weeks, four weeks, no rain. We had a bit of a drought where yeah. I was watering everything. <clears throat> and then Saturday I got out into my garden beds pulled out my old vegetables for the from the winter crops and tried putting the digging fork into the beds and <laughs> i could only get it a few inches down so i had to put forth a lot of effort to work my beds so that i could hurry up and get my seeds in the ground before the rain hit right hello from murfreesboro tennessee wow. Good evening from west mobile all right yeah welcome welcome hopefully everybody else got a little bit of uh Rain. Moisture, right? Well, Mo Mobile never has a problem with moisture. <laughs> it is the rainiest city in the entire United States. Right. And it's also a hurricane magnet. But mm -hmm. we're just north of uh, Mobile, and if you ever see where hurricanes want to come up into the bay, then they come right on up over us. Well, actually, we're not. Yeah, we're like northeast. Yeah, so, we, so as it's coming mm -hmm. into the bay, we're catching the... Yeah, that's right. We are that. catching the worst. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Good evening from Texas. Howdy from New Mexico. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. We're at New Mexico. I've been to a few places. I've actually been in the Navy and flying. I flew all over the place. So familiar with a lot of areas. Actually, when we went to Albuquerque, we went on alert there at the Air Force Base. And we went out in town to go grab some food. And everything they serve there has chili peppers on it. <laughs> everything? I fell in love with chili peppers on my oh, eggs, wow. my burger, everything. It's wonderful. Uh -huh. And I actually want to replicate that. So that's how come he's got peppers growing everywhere. So Yeah, I really want to load up on those chilies there. Yep. They're wonderful. Just a few more minutes, guys, if you don't mind. If you got something you want to talk about in the meantime, go ahead and uh, just talk about it in the chat. Anybody uh, first-time viewers? Southeast corner, Lovington. Green chilies are the best, <laughs> yes. Hatch green chilies. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I grew some, and I actually would like to grow a lot and then build one of those burners where you roast the chilies. Right. And then you pull the skins off, and then you could can the chilies. That would be good for the enchiladas that I make because I yes. like to use green chilies in my enchiladas. Yeah, green chilies are good on everything. Mm -hmm. Who would ever thought it been good on eggs, but it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, But that's been a while ago. That's been about 15 years ago. North Florida. North Florida. Visiting family in Georgia looking for property. Oh, it's Carolyn. Oh, hey, Carolyn. <laughs> hey, Carolyn. Welcome back. Glad yeah. to have you. Yep. I hope... Uh, I hope the property search is going well for you. Mm -hmm. Middle Georgia is pretty too. It is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Michelle lived in uh, Georgia for a little while. I lived in Cumming. I lived in Canton. I lived in Cumming, just above Alpharetta. And yeah. then over Canton is just north of Woodstock. So. We fell in love with northern Georgia because it's where the Appalachian Trail starts. Mm -hmm. And uh, where, you know, that mountain chain down through there is just absolutely beautiful. beautiful. Dahlonega is beautiful. Yeah. 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 All right. Well, we have kind of a wide range of, you know, from all over. So. Yeah. I'm glad to, glad to see everybody's coming, coming mm -hmm. in. 
So do you want to? Yeah, you know what? We're at the five minute mark. Let's go ahead and get started. I actually took some notes. I got some things I want to discuss. And I had been watching some of the other YouTubers talking about the upcoming um, shortages that we're going to be dealing with. Now, my very first live stream that I did, we were talking about the fertilizer shortage and how <clears throat> because of the lack of inputs coming out of the Russian Ukraine area, that there are other countries that are really going to feel it hard, like Africa, where they import mm -hmm. 100% of their wheat. They're really going to feel it. They're probably going to go into some type of uh, famine there. Being in the United States, we're less prone to that because we're generally an exporter of grains, wheat and some corns, rice and stuff like that. Right. So we would be uh, apt to feel it a little less. But my mind is kind of changing about that a little bit <clears throat> because um, our system is on a JIT, J-I-T, just in time. <laughs> I actually learned that term whenever yeah. I was, uh, I took a business management course 30 years ago. And I heard it the other day and I was like, yeah, I remember JIT being a management um, um, pattern that companies like to go by. Mm -hmm. But the point is the United States is only on a 10 day um, just in time delivery of food. So from the time the supplier gets it to market, there's only 10 days worth of food on the market for people to consume out of the grocery stores. Mm. And so if you ever go into the Walmart and stuff in the middle of the night, you always see those stock, uh, stockers in there and they've got pallets and stuff mm -hmm. and they're reloading the shelves. And uh, you don't really realize how much food is taken off the shelf in a day's, day's time. And then you can go in and you can see it. But 10 days, I think that's pretty accurate for most things. I don't know other Walmarts, but just to talk, you know, just to make a statement um, in other states and, and around. But I noticed since COVID in, in our local Walmart in, in Bruton, um, there's more of the Walmart workers that are purchasing groceries for people to come by and pick up. Yeah. You know, there's a lot more of that since COVID hit. I mean, you don't That's see true. many just shoppers shopping. You see more Walmart um, associates and workers just pulling groceries that people are ordering and, and driving up and picking up. I myself don't like to do that because I like to read all the ingredients. I'm really funny about yeah. what I eat. But it, plus there's expiration date. You want to see, you know, how long you've got. And I like to compare prices while I'm in there. So but I was just going to point that out. Yeah. And uh, we've talked about everything that's in the foods, food section of your grocery store. The main ingredients are soy, mm -hmm. wheat, or corn. Mm -hmm. Most everything that's in a box. Enriched flour. Yeah. Sugar, which is usually a wheat or a corn. High fructose corn syrup. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, whenever you feel the pinch of the wheat market being in a decline due to the the fertilizer is not being able to be put on the fields, you're going to have less amount of food available to the store shelf. Now, we've discussed that in the past. That's nothing new. That's not what I'm, I'm here to discuss with you tonight. Um, but we're going to go on down the line and talk about a few things before we get to the one thing that I want you guys to focus on right now if you are growing your own food. But another thing that I want to talk about is there's a cooking oil shortage. Now, mm. we don't use vegetable oil here. We have cut refined oils out of our diet, yeah. and uh, they are not good for you. Do That's not, right. if you are health conscious, take those Crisco's and those vegetable sunflower, oil. Safe, safe flower oil, mm -hmm. uh, any of that stuff. Take, take that out of your diet, and you'll feel so much better. Canola oil. Yeah, your body cannot use those, uh, mm. those unhealthy fats. No. Nope. What we do is we had fried chicken the other night. Mm -hmm. We had our fried chicken and it was rolled in almond flour. It was and, a gluten free. Yeah. And fried in um, olive oil. Mm -hmm. And it was great. Mm -hmm. Now, I know it's expensive, but you can pay for your help from the front end or you can pay for your help from the back right. end. Right. Now, there's going to be a, a cooking oil shortage coming up real soon. If you have to have those cooking oils, uh, go ahead and get that now. I told Michelle last night we were sitting down and uh, we were talking and I said, we need to stock up on olive oil. Now they have put out a call for a reduced amount of olives 
or olive oil to be in the market mm. because olives come off trees. They don't take that much fertilizer. So you're not going to feel the pinch of olive oils. But if there is a reduced amount of cooking oils throughout mm -hmm. the market, people are going to start paying more to get the olive oils. And so that's going to really pull down the market right. uh, for olive oil. So if you cook with an oil, go ahead and start stocking up on your oils. Can you all hear us pretty good? Why don't you slide me the keyboard and I can type some, all right. some highs and stuff. You can just say it. I can hear you. Well, while you're talking, I can't really say it. That's being a tyrant. <laughs> okay. There. All right. Um, some of the other things that you guys should think about stocking up on is, do you have enough fuel in cans in case there's a power outage that you can run your generators on? We got hit with Hurricane Sally a couple of years ago. And we pulled our generator out and it didn't run. Mm, yeah. And I got out there with a screwdriver and we've got power out here and I was not prepared and come to find out my carburetor was the winner of EA85 ethyl gas. And so we had to order a brand new carburetor and uh, to get power started. But luckily my neighbor and uh, my father-in-law had a, generator that they hooked us up with and got us back mm -hmm. up on power again. So think about fuels to run a generator in case you got rolling brownouts. Texas is already experiencing it. California is already experiencing it. Now, as they pull power off the grid, other states are going to help supplement. So we could also feel implications for that. We haven't had that in the past here, mm -hmm. but it could be happening. It could be coming. So um, they have a question. Is there a way to increase the shelf life of olive oil, avocado oil, et cetera? You know what? I don't know. That's a good question. I don't know the shelf. Yeah. Let's look that up. Mm -hmm. Is there a comment back after the live? Yeah, we can leave it in okay. the comments below. We're going to leave it in the, the We're gonna description. Find that out for you. Or if anybody already knows, you can go ahead and put yeah. it in the chat for the benefit of the rest of us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um. Now, because of the upcoming food shortage, uh, right after World War II, it was really pushed hard to everybody start growing a victory garden in their backyard. Mm -hmm. And a victory garden wasn't a garden big enough for everybody to grow all their own food. It was just big enough to supplement and ease the pressures off the market. If you could grow 50% um, of your green beans, 50% right. of your uh Whatever it is you eat the most squash. of, squash, mm -hmm. you can blanch it, freeze it, peas, corn, peas, potatoes. Uh, go yeah. ahead and start thinking about little small victory gardens. And it, I'm talking 10 foot by 20 foot. If mm -hmm. you had a patch of food, 10 foot by 20 foot, and you uh, you intensely garden that area, you could pull a lot of food out of that, that amount of space. Now, we have recently done something we haven't done in the past, and we have planted uh, about 40 sweet potato starts. Huh? 18 to 24 months for olive oil. 18 to 24 months for olive oil. Okay, so that'll get you through for a little while. But uh, we planted two of our raised beds full of sweet potatoes. So it's our research department behind us. <laughs> Mrs. Google. <laughs> Ms. Google back there. Mm -hmm. I need to clean these. So we, we added uh, a large amount of sweet potatoes to our diet. And the reason we went with sweet potatoes, one, we really like sweet potatoes. Number two is any kind of root crop that you have that's in the ground, onions, sweet potatoes, um, regular Irish potatoes, you can generally get a large uh, density and a large amount of crop. So it's the roots that you like. Now, we are too late here for people to start planting Irish potatoes. You just won't get a harvest at this point because mm -hmm. it'll get too hot too quick. But right now, sweet potatoes are the thing to be putting in your garden. And uh, just in case you don't know, it takes about 120 days in the ground to harvest sweet potatoes, and they like a good warm soil. Yeah, awesome. Thanks, research department. <laughs> <laughs> you know, right now, we are um, we're in full swing on our green beans. We generally raise 100% of the green beans that we eat. We also eat green beans about once a week. Mm-hmm. So um, that for us is uh, 
a huge implement that we have always done and will continue to do and maybe even plant another round of green beans because if we have a year in the next two or three years where green beans take a hit, we got to have something to fall back on. So start planting extras. We are a family of three in this household. Well, what if we have one of my my kids mm-hmm. move in with us? Or mother or, or mother-in-law. That's right. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, what if the, they're not growing their food and mm-hmm. they want to come live with you because of the crisis that's hit? So go ahead and plan on an extra one or two people. And uh, right. it may be the little old lady down the street that you might have to help take a meal to every once in a while. Mm-hmm. Uh, some elder people in your church that you want to you wanna help out. And now that's another good community to tap into. If you're a member of a church group where you're close yeah. with all those people, Maybe you start getting with some of those members right. and uh, see what they're growing, see what you're growing, mm-hmm. and do so, a little swapping among yourselves. Yeah. especially seeds and yeah. whatnot. Yeah, mm-hmm. we have a good little community here where we're at in our church. Mm-hmm. We have um, we have sixty to eighty, you know, regular members going mm-hmm. to our church. Not on Wednesdays or Sunday nights, unfortunately. Right, but, but yeah. we're still like this. Yeah, you know, we're all intertwined. Right. We're connected mm-hmm. some way whether we're all family members or we're friends of families and stuff like that. We've got ties here. Mm -hmm. Strangefield Farms. We can go, we can a lot of green beans because we both love them and use them a lot. (laughs) Yeah. We, uh, we definitely stock up on our green beans. In fact, we put out a video the other day on our green beans. Green beans and um, broccoli is what we eat most of our, our vegetable. Yeah. Now Michelle had a little forethought last year is um, Harvest Guard reusable canning jar lids Mm -hmm. was a thing. And uh, I knew that we needed them. I knew we had an an upcoming uh, food crisis. I didn't know it would be this quick. And I was like, well, I'm going to go ahead and order some of these. How many should we order? And uh, I threw an amount out to her, and she doubled that. And I was like, well, do we really need that amount? Because that's a lot of money. Mm -hmm. And she goes, babe, we're going to need it. Mm -hmm. So. I just grinned and I pushed the I believe button and I'm <laughs> glad I did because <clears throat> we're good on those resealable lids now. Now, I actually think we should actually buy more of them and uh, Harvest Guard, if you're interested in those products, those are plastic uh, canning jar lids and they come with a rubber gasket and you can use those over and over again. And uh, Oh, okay. Jennifer likes the Harvest Guard. See? Yeah, yeah, I'm liking them. Yeah. This is our first time using them. I'm mm-hmm. really liking them. Um, great investment. Okay, now um, we we're talking about fertilizers a while ago, and I want to show you this. Last, we've been talking about the the upcoming shortage of food fertilizers, and up in Canada, they've agreed to start um, bulking up the market with potash. They have a big potash mine up in. Um, up in Canada. And the other day, I believe it was Sunday or something, we had this happen. 43 train cars, loads of potash, and the train derails. Another one of those crazy instances. I don't know. All our chats disappeared. Okay. Uh Uh-oh. How do we get the (laughs) chats back? Okay, you're up here. Go to... Of this okay there, thank there, you there we go huh. what variety of green beans do we plant rattlesnake okay yeah rattlesnake green beans is what we plant <clears throat> they grow great here they take the heat we usually get about four really good pickings off of them and um actually we can pull these out and when we get our next one or two pickings off and we're going to plant another round and i'm actually looking at some others just for out of novelty mm-hmm. uh, maybe a different flavor a different color bean or something like that so, yeah, just a coincidence. So I'm sure it was a coincidence that 43 train cars, mm. hundreds of tons of potash that was going for fertilizer plants. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> All right. Um, what else? I got some notes here written down. Now let's go ahead and get into the meat and the potatoes of what this uh, what this video live stream is all about. And last week, Saturday, we started getting our rain. 
well, I was going to run out and I was going to start planting some summer vegetables, butter beans, peas, and another round of field corn. And I said, Michelle, we got to run down to Jeff's, and which is our local feed store we have here, and pick up um, some seed. We got down there, and Jeff generally ha always has uh, these big bins mm -hmm. of corn of several different varieties. He's probably got 50 pounds of corn seeds just out on, on the shelf. And uh, we went in there the other day, and they were all gone. And I kind of remember back during the COVID, whenever it hit, there was a seed shortage where people were trying to go to the store and pull the little packages of burpees and fairy morse and stuff like that off the shelf. And I, I, even I remember going to the Walmart and there not being any seeds on the rack. Or you not. mean like during COVID? During COVID, yeah. people were panicking. They yeah. want to do a little bit of Yeah, they gardening. wouldn't allow people to put seeds out. They wouldn't allow to sell seeds. Up in Michigan, they were, they were roping it off so that mm -hmm. you cannot go buy seeds. They would not let you reach over and grab those seeds to go plant. But around here, they didn't rope them off but you couldn't go and find any of the seeds that you generally plant because they were all sold out. People were started snatching those up. Mm -hmm. So if you're a gardener and you grow your food, go ahead and go now and get your seeds for next year. And now that led to the next little slide that I want to show you is how many years will seeds last in storage? Go ahead. Now I'm going to blow this up a little bit bigger so you can see. Oh. Well, I thought I was going to blow it up. But you can see there that bean seed lasts a minimum of three years. Broccoli, three. Uh, cabbage, four. Um, put it back where it's a split screen. Cabbage. Let me see. Let me get this back to. A, there you go. Okra, two years. Onions, a year. Peppers, two years. Rutabaggers, four. And uh, I just called out some of the main crops that I'm interested in keeping seeds on. And I generally keep um, a bunch of seeds in our refrigerator. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, we have some heirloom dent corn that was given to us back in 2016. And it was in a uh, vacuum sealed package. It wasn't vacuum, vacuum sealed. It was just sealed. And uh, I wasn't sure that the seeds were still going to be good, but I've kept them in the freezer for all these years. And I was like, I finally want to pull that corn out, grow it, and maybe even turn it into some flour. So I went ahead and put a bed of that in on Saturday. And it all came up through the rain. The, we just had three or four days worth of rain. And I walked out there today when I got home from work. And we have corn plants. And it all <laughs> came up. And it's been in the freezer ever since. And uh, I wasn't shocked, but I was kind of questionable about how long would these seeds last? But they were in there probably, what, four or five years? Five, yeah. Five years at least. I think it was like from 2016. 16. Yeah. That's when that was given to us, yeah. So <clears throat> that's what I really want to talk to you guys about is go ahead and think about all those uh, staple crops that you want to grow to supplement your diet. And I'm not talking about uh, some radish seeds. You know, those are fun to grow and to munch on while you're in the garden or add to a salad. That's fine but those aren't the ones that are going to sustain you. I'm talking about sustainable foods, mm -hmm. potatoes, the root crops, the onions, the tomatoes, because you can your tomatoes, you can make your sauces. Carrots even. Carrot, can your carrots. Yeah. Uh, beans and peas, especially. You can eat that and eat it and eat mm -hmm. it and eat it, and it will sustain you. Potatoes will sustain you. Um, go ahead and start grabbing your seeds for those type of crops. Uh, cabbages, broccoli, mm -hmm. and uh, we're going to go out. Well, I haven't even went out and bought any of this stuff yet, but I wanted to bring it to you because it, it was on my mind. And I was like, um, I want to get this. I want to get this information out because none of the other homestead channels that I've heard about is talking about this, that you need to go out and start getting all these. Well, seeds. the Appalachian chick that we watched her video, she was really. Patera. Yeah. Yeah. Pushing the. Um, the, Some of the other stuff that I talked about tonight. Yeah, the Victory Garden. Or, yeah, so mm -hmm. familiar with Metcalf Mills, the Stone Ground Mills. Yeah, uh, Justro is actually on my Facebook. Uh, I've talked with him a time or two, and and uh, I'm going to end up probably getting one of his meals whenever he releases that meal. 
I'm really interested in having a grist mill here mm -hmm. for the community to use so that people in our area can grow their corn, grow their wheat, and come here and uh, for a very modest price of whatever that may work out to be, come here and use the, uh, the grist mill. Mm -hmm. Another thing that we've already done is we've bought a butter bean sheller. Butter beans are huge in this area. Mm -hmm. There are people around here that have those big butter bean shellers. You put a five gallon bucket load in and then they thrash the beans and then the, be the butter beans come out of the bottom. That's why we planted so many butter beans the other day. I've never planted butter beans in the past because I hate sitting down and shelling those. Could you imagine mm -hmm. sitting down and trying to shell a five gallon bucket load of butter beans? It take you all day, but it only takes five minutes whenever you dump them in the sheller and then they're clean, they're ready to go. So we're going to have a butter bean sheller that anyone in the community right now, if you have butter beans, you can hit me up and I will let you use my butter bean sheller. <laughs> the one that we bought um, we went and bought it from the guy and his wife's grandfather built this and it still has the electric motor on from the 1920s and it's still running and it's still driving the sheller. Now I'm going to, um, I'm going to make YouTube videos of building one of these shellers so that if you are not in our local area and you're watching this, but you're interested in building a butter bean sheller, I'll tell you right now, there's nobody else out there that tells you, uh, step by step on how to build these. There are a couple of videos that you can probably draw some good information from. And there's mm -hmm. one guy in particular that really started getting um, good information. But it, as he was putting the critical components together, he didn't put the valuable information in his videos and it kind of fell off. And I know how it is whenever you're trying to build something <laughs> and you have to turn around and grab the camera. You don't yeah. want to do that because yeah. You know, when you're involved in the moment and you're doing what you're doing, you don't want to have but to stop. But it's so critical. It is. Yeah. And, and I'm I think, a tyrant about it. <laughs> <laughs> Michelle keeps bringing up the tyrant thing because we had someone comment on our YouTube the other can day. You, can you take that off the screen? So yeah. Can, yeah. Yeah. Let me uh, let me take this down. I hope y'all have had an opportunity to screenshot that. It's on our, um, it's it's, on our Facebook page. It's on our Facebook page. You can also Google this list. If you're not on our Facebook page, we invite you to come over. Uh, Flemington Famous, look us up and join us on our uh, on our Facebook. We generally post a lot more over there than we do make um, YouTube videos. Um, we'll do little quick status updates and little fun stuff and little fun facts, but we generally try to keep it gardening or homestead oriented over there. So Carolyn, we will make some um, butter bean sheller. We're going to use this original one that we have as, you know, the, what do you call it? The the example, I guess, to because Randall said we couldn't find any videos on how to make them. So we're basically going to use that as the form. That's right. And so we're going to make a couple of butter bean shellers that we're probably going to going to sell. Sell. So. But the reason you know, I bought this is not because of the butter bean sheller itself. It's because I wanted to help the community, and uh, I wanted to get it documented on how other people can do this. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we're going to be selling some of these off. But we will document the video for those who want to make their own butter bean shell. That's the main goal. Aren't looking, you know, to buy one. They want to make their own. Hey, we'll have that video. Yeah. Now, mm -hmm. buying, buying used, I've seen two bean shellers on uh, on Facebook. And they're about the five or $600 mm -hmm. mark. I haven't seen one for $800 used. They're pretty pricey. Yeah. We have to replace the plug in that, that one. It's extremely It's from old. the 20s. It's frayed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, all right. So, um, Randall, I know I've been saying things like tyrant, but I'm being a tyrant on here. But um, in our last live, you know, I knew that whenever we started this, uh, this YouTube stuff that we were going to get some haters. There's haters everywhere you go. You know, there's people there's love haters. us and then there's haters. And so after the video went live and we released it on YouTube and our Facebook, um, we got this comment from this, I'm going to call him Daniel Teabagger, but um, <laughs> <laughs> and that's probably not nice because I know that's not his name, but that's the name he's going to get. So anyways, he called, he said I was a tyrant. He said I was a tyrant and he said a couple of other things. And I was just like, Wow, for somebody I've never met before, he sure did. So. <laughs> he found any. <laughs> I'm, not, I, I'm 
not in front of the camera. So there's no way you could have known that. Just a tyrant outside the camera. So <laughs> no, but yeah. All right. You guys got any questions before we move on? That was the biggest thing that I want to discuss tonight is go ahead and secure your seeds, secure your fertilizer, any kind of uh, whatever it's going to take for you to grow food. Go ahead and lock those things down. Um, now, I know a lot of people are paycheck to paycheck, mm -hmm. but seeds don't cost much. Right. Take $20 and go buy your seeds for next year and mm -hmm. go ahead and put that in a freezer. Um, another another clue about saving seeds if you can put them in a closed bag and take the oxygen out, when you have oxygen in there, um, it degrades those seeds. So the, the more oxygen you can pull out, the longer your seeds will take. Well, they will save. If you can find the little um, absorber packages and put one of those in there, and then it'll extract the oxygen out. <clears throat> and um, I kind of found out what some of those little oxygen absorbers are made from. They put ground up iron in there and whenever you iron mixes with air oxygen it rusts and then it absorbs all the oxygen because it's using that to rust with so that it ends up using all the oxygen out of a out of a container so that's the principle that's how it works so if you want to start saving seeds uh, put it in an airtight container extract all the oxygen I don't recommend putting them in vacuum seal because when you put them under vacuum seal, then you're extracting moisture out of the seed itself. You don't really want to, you don't want to damage your seeds. Um, just squeeze the oxygen out, seal it up, put it in the freezer. Should be good for several years. I know there are seed banks that are tucked away inside the mountains over in like Norway or something. Mm -hmm. And it has like the world's largest seed collection over there. Yeah. And uh, so how do they keep it? It naturally stays frozen down in that cave. Wow. And so when they that's just so they just cool. go down there and they put it on the shelf and that's it. They lock the door. Wow. So cool. Teresa, I was I was telling Ted that that this week we aren't able to get our garden up to par because of other things going on, but we can surely plan for later. That's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> I want one of those meals plus the butter bean sheller. Yeah, Ellen, um, I really wanted the butter bean sheller, but I also really want a grist meal, and Michelle does too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Are you aware of any South Alabama groups for homesteaders? There's actually um, Gulf Coast Homesteaders is what we're a group, a, a, a member of mm -hmm. on Facebook, and I think they even... Yeah, on Instagram. And they're mainly out of Florida. Yep. She was asking about South Alabama. What? Mm -hmm. So if you're in South Alabama, you are more more than welcome to come down and participate with us in the Gulf Gulf Coast Homesteaders. Right. They include South Alabama. They're just over the line, about 20, 30 minutes from us. That's a uh, uh, homestead that runs that, and uh, they kind of head up that event every October. And there's also Northeast homesteaders, Northeast Florida homesteaders. I think that's what. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, another one is Keep Ways. Jessica mm -hmm. over there runs that one. And uh, all these groups are great groups. Go Dothan join area. one of those. Yeah. yeah. So just south of you, Keepers of the Old Ways. She's out of Bluntstown. That's a great group to um, a lot get, of good get resources there. In. Yeah. Her name is Jessica. So just look that up. In fact, I'll type it in. Now, they host events every year, and uh, we have been speakers at that event. We've had Doug and Stacy at Keepers of the Old Ways. Uh, Gulf Coast Homesteaders coming up. We're going to be having uh, Daniel Arms from Arms Family Homestead there. Mm -hmm. um, who are some of the other members that are going to be there or YouTubers? Oh, gosh. David the Good. Is all always at, at these events because Cog David, Hill. David the Good is here. Cog mm -hmm. Hill Farms is going to be there. Mm -hmm. Yep. And we'll be there, of course. <laughs> yeah, we'll be there. We're actually uh, been asked to hold a demonstration on processing chicken, processing the chicken, mm -hmm. break them down into pieces and parts. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're going to do just a few birds uh, for mm -hmm. that event at the Gulf Coast Homesteaders. Sorry about that. <laughs> oh, 
I think Michelle likes the likes typing. Yeah, this is new. <laughs> <laughs> uh huh. There we go. All right, what else, guys? What else you want to discuss? Merriam Farms. Yeah, they're going to be there again. Yeah. I don't know if they're going to be speaking, but they're going to be there. They're right. always doing really neat things over at their farm. Is that the herbs? And, yeah. Yeah, that, that, they're awesome. They are awesome. Mm -hmm. They've got some really good stuff. You yeah. can look them up. I think they even have their own website. And uh, mm -hmm. maybe I think they're on Facebook. Yeah, they do. But they're always doing stuff. I think they've recently hold a, a shiitake log making event out there. Which you need, he needs to get, you need to get moving on your mushrooms. I do. I started a bunch of mushrooms. Mm -hmm. I did a video on it mm -hmm. and they're sitting back there. They're probably been mummified by now. I hope not. <laughs> I don't want that to go to waste. You'll be there too. There'll All be right. another rap video to go along with it. <laughs> yeah, we won't talk about the rap video. Uh-huh. Uh, so, who's L Ellen's? Who is that? I'll be there too. Who is AFJ 3RD? Who's that? I don't know. Okay. You'll be there because you're a speaker or you'll be there because you have tickets? <laughs> <laughs> Some of these people, I might actually know them. And then uh, they come in with a weird screen name I've never seen before. Right, right. Okay, so uh, what else? Is there anything else to talk about on our list no that's the that's the main points i wanted to cover tonight i'll mm -hmm. go ahead and uh, close our notebook up and let's just uh let's just chat with the the group a little bit oh me too carolyn i can't wait to meet you as well we're excited yeah can't wait to meet you mm -hmm. I invite all you guys if you're going to be in the local area come down to the gulf coast homesteaders come to the keepers mm -hmm. the old ways and um yeah, just look it up. Look yeah. it up on Facebook, and it'll come up. Gulf Coast Homesteaders. I'll type that in. <laughs> All right. Um, I don't have anything else to talk about. Do you want to talk well, about you know, I know there's the whole unfortunate, very sad shooting that took place in Texas just a couple of days ago. And um, I know I have family in Texas in Corpus Christi. My brother lives there. And then I've got family East Texas. And then, you know, also your daughter. My stepdaughter lives over there in Austin. In so Austin. Yeah. it's very Prayer, sad. Prayers for Texas. Mm -hmm. Prayers for Texas. Yeah. It's evil. It's pure um, mm -hmm. evil is all you can say. When you go in and the purpose is just to kill innocent children. Yeah. Little little kids that <clears throat> probably That's have right. never harassed anybody, never no, bullied anybody. No. Mm -hmm. They don't understand it. That's right. Arlen. <clears throat> well, nice to meet you, Arlen. Silver Fox meat rabbits. Anyone in Lower Alabama is selling? Uh, I don't rabbits. know anybody that's doing meat rabbits right now. Well, what about um, Hidden Oaks? Hidden Oaks is... I don't know if they don't have they enough. Have... You can look up Hidden Oaks and uh, yeah. ask them. I know they have rabbits, and he was trying to get me started on rabbits, but I don't know like, if he mm -hmm. has any to sell. So and either Hidden Oaks or Dusty Goat? Dusty Goat got rid of most of their rabbits. I okay. think they only have like two or three rabbits right now. How's the, the garden coming? Okay. It's, Hoods in the garden. <laughs> she meant to say <laughs> hows. <laughs> I know how that is. Mm -hmm. I went out there today and did some pest control on the garden. We've uh, Our corn is about eight foot tall, just mm -hmm. starting to tassel today. And I started pulling the uh, the pollen grains off the tassels and put it on the little hairs. I want to make sure they get well pollinated. Mm -hmm. But we're doing uh, blue corn, Ohio blue, and I got the seed from uh, Hoss Tools. We grew a bit of that. <clears throat> We're going to grind some of that just for a test run. Mm -hmm. But I want to save the majority of those seeds because we want to we want to build up our seed stock um, for future grain. We're going to do several plantings of corn this year yeah. mm -hmm. to grind into uh, into flour. I can't have the yellow corn. It doesn't agree with me. So we're going to try the blue corn and see how that works. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry to hear about the Texas shooting. Mm -hmm. Um. But you don't have to run off because of, of that. Yeah. But uh, on another note, 
I just read an article that Santa Rosa County, Florida, just over the line from us, is now going to institute guardians. Mm -hmm. In order to be uh, considered a guardian, you have to be prior police, military, or a firearms instructor. Mm -hmm. And then they're not going to be replacing the uh, police, but they're going to be hired on as additional guardians, guardians. Over the and i think that's a good solution mm -hmm. yeah yeah because i had mentioned to randall that it's it's very sad that our money in the banks are heavily guarded um more so than our children in our schools yeah. and something's wrong with that i mean true you know keep keep an eye on our money but our children are more important than our money so that needs to be adjusted somehow you know yeah so other than that, um, I went out to the garden and everything that we planted on Saturday has come up. Mm -hmm. we, our, all of our stuff is looking good. Um, we got potatoes that are going to be finishing up here soon. We mm -hmm. planted the purple fingerling type potatoes because we like the uh, benefits of the anthracyanins. Right. Mm -hmm. The darker the vegetable, the better. Yeah. So we're trying to put more more color into the uh, into the diet. We're not trying to go with just a, a white potato or a white corn, mm -hmm. you know, purple corn, purple potatoes. So that's what we're we're trying to, to shoot for. Yeah. Um, that not all parents are cut out to homeschool kids, unfortunately. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. There's not a perfect, perfect solution for anything in this world. That's right. There's not a perfect solution for healthcare, but we could for raising kids. We could hire people kids. to, um, be guardians and, um, watch over the schools a little bit better. And like what I said, it'd be nice to have a code at the gate so you could get in and, and out. And I know some people might think it might be a little bit inconvenient, but if you got some crazy man just thinking he can just drive into the gate of where your children are, then that's, you know, something's got to change. Another, uh, it's another physical barrier. Mm -hmm. You know, we have been in the military and working in cybersecurity field, you have different uh, protections in place, that's different right. layers. And number one is your is your gate. That's yeah. your physical access barrier. Well, you protect everything on your computer with a password. And your phone has a password nowadays. So why not have a password to get in the gate to get your kid? So uh, every little thing helps, I guess. Instead of just standing around arguing about it, and that some someone needs to do something before the next shooter gets armed and unfortunately goes to the next school and there's just been too much. Yeah. We never heard about anything like that whenever we were kids yeah. ever education, not in never happened. That's right. Yeah. I'm, I'm sick and tired of the, the school system being an, an indoctrination system. I don't know what to do. My daughter just graduated last week with a master's degree in education. Mm -hmm. and she's off to be a teacher and God be with her. Yeah. God mm -hmm. bless her. She wants to teach the third graders. I'm definitely saying some prayers for her. Yeah, she's going to be up in the Washington, D.C. area. I'm hoping after what just happened, it doesn't seem like, you know. Doesn't... Very scary. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, the problem yeah. starts at home. It starts with what you do with your children. I it totally starts agree. with what you don't do with your children. Mm -hmm. I had a coworker telling me yesterday that he had a, uh, a kid come over that was a friend of his kid. And uh, he has always done martial arts. So his uh, his son's friend's mother asked him to teach her son martial arts. And he's like, you can tell this kid has never gotten off the couch. He was overweight, Aww. tried to get him to do some jumping jacks at uh, nine years old. And he couldn't do so jumping sad. jacks. Yeah. Um, mm -mm. And uh you know, you've really got to be involved with your kids. You can't sit them on the couch yeah. and uh, put them like, put them in the corner like a potted plant. They spend way too much time on home. Uh, I mean, on computers and on their their phone and sucking down a, and, a poor diet too. Right, poor diets, and then playing those horrible video games about killing. And you know, I was thinking, why doesn't someone come up with a video game of like how to survive? 
and plant and and be self-sufficient and why don't they make that a strategic video game well there is a farm <laughs> simulator out there and i'd love to play it yeah right <laughs> but i don't play video games i don't have time to yeah even though um michelle is not a fan of video games whatsoever mm -hmm. she probably wouldn't mind me playing that one that would be kind of fun <laughs> that would be kind of fun that would be different but yeah the other ones uh-uh Cousin Leaky said also that the price of Roundup has went through the roof. That uh, he doesn't even know if he has, you know, the using the Roundup on his fields before he plants. Um, it's really good. It's really breaking them. I don't know how the farmers are standing the shortages right now and uh, the shortages of Roundup, the increase of uh, price on fertilizer, the increase of for, uh, price on Roundup and diesel fuel. Uh, and I'm not a proponent of Roundup, but um, they're really they're really taking the hit. Yeah, gun racks in the back of trucks in the parking lot. Um, that was that was whenever I was in school here in Plumpton. Also, yeah, it was not uncommon to see a gun in the back rack mm -hmm. of a vehicle. Yeah, nobody went and got the got it and threatened anybody's life. Right. Yeah, I wish they would ban, ban Roundup. It's um, it's evil. I hate that the fact that they, they spray it on our food. That's one thing. Is If you want to use it for our, um, weed control is one thing. If you want to spray it on food, that's totally another, yeah. another level. Yeah. And I'm, I'm not a proponent of either one, but, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, I'd like to be able to grow our own grain, but it takes so much land in order to grow your own grain. That's going to be another subject we're going to talk about maybe even next week is what does it take mm -hmm. to grow and uh, solely survive and grow all your own food at home. Anna's funny. YouTube is my nemesis and here I am. Watching y'all. <laughs> That's so true. Well, welcome. Yeah. <laughs> That's Randall. That's all he does all the time is watch it. He even turns his phone in his vehicle right there by the road so he can watch his videos. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't watch YouTube as I'm going down the road, but I have a YouTube on and I will listen to the YouTube. As right. well. I've not listened to radio in seven or eight years, probably by myself. Mm -hmm. I have always got something on that I can benefit from. Mm -hmm. yeah. And a matter of fact, the even the country music, we listened to uh, 90s country music on iHeartRadio on our last trip. And I was noticing the quality of the music. Mm -hmm. The 90s is way different from the country music that they have today and the fact that the stuff that I don't agree with. Right. Um, you know, give heaven some hell. Mm -hmm. I don't agree with that term. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's hard for me to listen to that kind of stuff. Sacrilege. And uh, <clears throat> it's changed. Quality music's changed mm -hmm. and almost just can't stand to listen to it. I have to turn it off. Right. Yeah. So if I could sit there and watch somebody tell me how to grow sweet potatoes, I'd rather do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Listen to Christian radio for sure. Yeah. Uh, I, just, I probably recently I listened to more Christian radio if I'm going to be in the car and uh, listen to something other than a podcast or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Well, well, we've been on here for 48 minutes. I don't want to get off. I'm kind of enjoying it. Mm -hmm. I know. <laughs> but then it, I might come across as a tyrant. <laughs> yeah, tyrant for tyrant, tying up everybody else's. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, podcast. What do you guys like to um, listen as far as podcast? Type it in the description. I'm interested. I want to know. Maybe it's something that I, I would pick up and listen to. Yeah. I actually uh, listened to David the Good's book on audio one time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then told him I did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, David, he's good people. I really enjoy spending time with him. I know he's uh, super busy. Mm -hmm. Just released another book, sent it to the presses like yesterday or day before or something. Mm. So, yeah, he's, he's busy. He's got a lot going on. And with 10 kids, too. That's a lot. Yeah, it takes up a lot of his time. Mm -hmm. All right. 
All right. You ready to close it out? Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. We appreciate you uh, joining us this evening. We hope you found something valuable. If you this is your first time watching us, we invite you to hit the subscribe button. Don't forget to hit the like button if you really enjoyed the content that we put out. Mm -hmm. And uh, continue to follow us along. We thank, thank you for uh, watching and participating. Thank you. Thank you. All right, guys. That's it. We're going to talk to you later. See you on the next live.